This is the Andre Segovia Show. This is the Andre Segovia Show, and I am your host, Andre Segovia. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the program. I have a unique guest in that he's a fellow content creator that does not create content on the usual suspects, such as YouTube. He chooses instead to post his content on decentralized platforms or what some of you might know as alternative platforms or alt tech. And I don't like that terminology. I actually reject it because of negative connotations that these big tech oligarchies are trying to label as such to anyone that competes against YouTube because they don't refer to the Daily Motion or Vimeo or any other those video platforms that are considerably more mainstream as alternative platforms, but they'll label anything to disagree with as such. So my guest today, Trevor from the Trevor Report, and I discuss that very thing about the big tech oligarchies controlling the free flow of information online. Also, this turned out to be a cross-platform collaboration because after my program, I appeared on the Trevor Report to discuss something more philosophical and even from uh, my perspective being Christian, to bring a Christian perspective to some of the issues of today and how we can resolve some things that, that come up, if at all. And I think the answers might surprise you, but on his program, as soon as those links are available, I'll be leaving them in the video description down below. Uh, but most importantly, you'll be able to find us at the show notes of this episode at www.thinkshakeover.com. Well, without further ado, Let's get into it, shall we? Here's my conversation with Trevor from the Trevor Report. For those of my audience that are not familiar with you, uh, tell us who you are and what do you do? Well, um, my name is Trevor Brown, but um, on this uh, blockchain network space, excluding uh, maybe a few other platforms, uh, I go by this just Trevor, because eh, if I'm going to brand myself, I may as well brand my name because it's me. Why would I lie? Yeah. <laughs> so um on these platforms, I sort of do, I'm just, I'm rolling it out slowly. I'm just basically doing what people would do on YouTube. I'm going to start gaming pretty soon. I'm going to start, um, I guess I can count my sort of like little political uh, 10, 20 minute videos that I do on things like uh, Odyssey, Rumble, Mines. I don't want to say bit shoot because I just kind of back it up on there. I don't really like bit shoot but i'm on bit shoot and i just kind of i'm slowly rolling out everything people do on youtube but that they like to do on youtube but not on youtube mm. and the reason for this is because people always say oh you don't like the social media censorship just build your own mm. multinational conglomerate that has colonized the public square through commerce they don't say that that would be too honest of them and too wordy <laughs> yeah that's fair well i mean the, these are um these are college educated leftist insurrectionaries so i mean who knows but the, so it's just like okay fine if you're gonna do this if you're gonna especially with the news that's come out recently where i believe the press secretary jen saki essentially said something along the lines of we are working to flag posts for facebook so it's like okay so with regards to social media, the Biden administration has essentially taken Mussolini's position on the role of government, where there's nothing inside, nothing that isn't outside of it, mm. you know, nothing outside of the state, nothing against the state kind of thing. So it's like, okay, so you, you have an ethical agenda that you're pursuing, and in order to pursue that ethical agenda, you essentially... And this is kind of what I say on these political videos. It's like you bully, intimidate, harass, and ostracize in the name of love, tolerance, and unity, mm -hmm. basically. So it's like, huh. So there's that. And then there's Twitter, which is this, this just giant like monoculture of pseudo benevolence where everyone's constantly trying to one up each other. And Pretty sort of much. like, okay, so if I do this on Silicon Valley, I have the potential not only to have the government remove all of my prospects because I violated their ethical agenda. That just so happens to violate my uh, First Amendment, Fourth Amendment, and Fifth Amendment rights, but never mind all that. Then there's the targeted harassment campaign mob on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it has been deemed cancel closures. It's just kind of like, okay, whatever. I don't want anything to do with that. I'll do it on here. I'll be a part of this space that 
And it's not like I say anything particularly wrong either. It's just these people have gone so insane. I want nothing to do with them, yeah. basically. And we're going to circle back to that to borrow. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, mostly because uh, it, it, is, it is a point that... Uh, a point of discussion because uh, I am um, I started my channel on YouTube, and you take in a position where uh, as a relatively new content creator, you it, it's been a uh, several months now, right? I think it was December, was it, or is this this year that you started? Uh, your, your I started channel? in December, and okay. I noticed that if I didn't edit the videos, I could do kind of the Trevor Report content that I do, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I can like the 10, 20 minutes and I didn't edit it at all and I could post it on there, but I wouldn't be able to post the, um, the sources down below that I do today. That's sort of um, an innovation after I kind of recuperated myself when I had yeah. to basically just cower in front of the eye of Sauron because like, oh God, they might be after me. I have the yeah. wrong opinions, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, it's, it's to that point that uh, um, I, I still find it interesting because first off, what inspired you uh, to, to start making videos uh, and secondly, like you basically you explained it already, but um, what kind of research you did into going into what is considered in the mainstream as alternative platforms or what I refer to as decentralized platforms? Mm, yeah. Well, it inspired me to do it to do it on there, essentially because I've been in this uh, I've been I'm in Gen Z, you know, we've sort of grown up with the Internet the way it is now with uh, 2011, the algorithms and things like that. That's when our generation for the most part started using social media. And I have this friend, uh, we go to the same high school together. I'm not gonna say his name in case he's the victim of a targeted harassment campaign for mm, thinking yeah. differently than he does now when he was in the ninth grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because that's how these people operate. But he basically, I would say, I would say things. And because you're in high school and you're around friends, you don't really use a filter because why would you, you're around friends, you're around people who don't seek to destroy you for their own benefit. Right. So he would just write down the things that I said on like a Microsoft word thing on his phone. And he would deliberately remove the context from him because he specifically thought that it was funnier. Well, when the lockdowns first started happening, he, he basically went from that to, I don't know how to explain it. It's like he became the opposite of the person that he was. And it's because he could, didn't have any of the normal interaction person to person. He had this format with the zoom Mm. and things like that. But, and the only communication he had was with zoom and talking to people on social media. Well, if these companies on social media slowly start banning people, well, now he's put himself in I guess an echo chamber. So he went from deliberately moving, removing context from things his friend said, because he thought it was funnier to in like three, four, five months to the complete opposite position of you shouldn't say that that's uh, an ism or an IST. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and at that point, I was just kind of like, okay, So whatever Twitter is, it's some kind of colonizing force that strips the personality of people, you know, and I'm just like, oh, okay, bye. (laughs) Yeah, I don't hate YouTube or Facebook or anything, but like Twitter specifically, like, bye. I've never had an account, you Mm -hmm. know, but I see Twitter posts on like Instagram and Facebook and people have made careers on YouTube talking about what stupid people say on Twitter. Yeah, that's true. Which, what in the world? Yeah, and, and that's why Twitter is, uh, it, it definitely is a, a, a cesspool of just, mm. just vile things. Um, I actually terminated my original Twitter account. Um, Good for you. Thousands of re- uh, uh, interactions and things like that. Um, and, he, and all the, that was early on, like maybe early 2000, 2010s um, that uh, I had a Twitter mostly because um, for those especially uh, newer followers of mine uh, don't know about this so I'm going to be doing an episode specifically to kind of reintroduce myself to new followers I used to do uh, where it was more politically dominant content but I couldn't do that all the time because uh, I was sacrificing my sanity uh, to just mm-hmm. delve with all the stupidity on the side of politics so I I, I took something that I loved 
and that was uh, Hollywood television and, and, and soundtracks. So I ended up doing uh, something called the Critic Corner in conjunction with what at the time was called the Andrew Segovia Show. And in doing that, that was a way for me like to just like, screw all the politics, let me deal with the uh, things that I enjoy and just talk about those things. And I became part of the viral campaign for The Dark Knight. So um, mm -hmm. Batman is and my go-to. So being a part of that was super awesome. Um, being able to uh, get inside uh, scoops uh, to... Heath Ledger's Joker before the really knew film. about it was super awesome. Yes, it is. And here's the ultimate kicker being invited by Warner Brothers to be among the um, because, to, because they're rewarding us that we're part of the, the viral campaign. That's what Nolan likes doing these little uh, things. Um, so I got to see the movie uh, days before it opened. But most of all was having one of the first reviews in the world on my uh, Critic Corner. And uh, I'll probably do some overlays after this. I could show uh, what still exists of, uh, of my old website where I published the perhaps the first review in the United States about uh, the Dark Knight. Uh, at the time, they didn't, they didn't have me sign an NDA. <laughs> uh, the next time they invited me, they made me sign an NDA. <laughs> so it's like, non-disclosure agreement, don't talk about the movie, okay? Yeah, but I didn't spoil it. I just said, go watch this thing. It's awesome. But with all that, uh, now it's not like that anymore, uh, where the, the, whole, the whole politics of things has permeated um, like anything regarding movies. And after um, The Last Jedi, th The Last of Us 2, and now with Masters of the Universe, with Kevin Smith turning against uh, um, his own fans, it's like yeah. there is there seems to be no end to this. And one of the things that exacerbates this is is Twitter, where you get um, these super loud minority is, uh, voices, but they're you know they're overshadowing everybody because nobody wants to get in a Twitter match. Like, it, who has time for that? Unless like uh, um, I think it was a. Uh, 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 what's am I going to put the show called? Oh, South Park. When I'm talking about like the the one that was taking over the World of War World of Warcraft that World of Warcraft episode, and someone that just literally obliterated almost every um, multiplayer character there, and the uh, the bosses of War, uh, World of Warcraft were like, we're looking at someone that absolutely has no life yeah. to be able to do that, and then someone asked the very poignant question, how do you kill that which has no life? <laughs> oh. <laughs> South Park. Oh, oh man. Yeah. But it, it's with all that that I did end up deleting uh, my Twitter. But I did end up recreating a Twitter just because I had the handle like, and I use it as a mirror account now. I'm not following anybody on there. Uh, and I have to start from scratch anyway, but it's okay. It's just literally a mirror account. So things are just being tossed in there. I do no interaction and I don't check any DMs just because I, I don't care. Uh, but it just felt like, you know what, just, just have it there to reserve the thing just in case uh, something comes up. And um, when all these other uh, platforms uh, popped up uh, i kind of started like you know i don't want to be another one so I'm like yeah but it won't hurt to reserve the name in case you know maybe it's the next best thing i don't know but and this is what we're going to touch on i guess the decentralized platform stuff because hmm. uh, i don't like this whole alternative platform or alt tech um uh, discussions and some people that are on this alt tech stuff uh they've embraced the label and say yeah we're, we're the alternative tech the alt tech yeah but except that it doesn't sound good because of the ones making the labels of the ones on the left and the ones on the mm. left constructing this uh, this label that didn't exist before has a negative connotation to it. And they, mm. they do this. And if they're the ones that uh, are trying to make the playing rules and you don't challenge them and just go with it, then next thing you know it, you're being uh, suckered into it. You're being led into yeah. a trap. So alt in the way we know it now after the 2016 election has a negative connotation to mean extreme right wing. Mm -hmm. And everything else that um, that uh, comes with it. Uh, no, decentralized platforms are not that. Uh, yeah. Last last I checked, we don't say uh, um, what is it uh, Venmo, Daily Motion, and other ones. We don't call them alt te uh, um, alt platforms to YouTube. We just say all oh, those alternatives to YouTube. If you don't want to be on YouTube, but they kind of all share the same uh, retail space in the same block where they're all kind of sharing yeah. the same rules. Here, it passes around. We'll all eliminate the same ones and, and, and get rid of them. So that's why uh, those that didn't, I guess, drink the Kool-Aid, we're like, we're not going to do that on our platforms. Um, they're the ones that, oh, then we'll just, you know, slander yeah. you and libel you, calling you alt tech. But these are actually decentralized platforms. Then you you hit uh, this this point kind of with respect to uh, blockchain. Uh, which of these would you say are blockchain? I know Odyssey is one of them, I, I think. Well, yeah, it's be I, I call them, first off, I'm not, um, Andres Sokovia, if, if, you know, for the people watching this, he's the, he's the tech guy. I'm the, I'm the politics and philosophy uh, nerd, you know, um, and video gaming nerd soon. 
<laughs> that like a, like a year from now, I don't have the, I don't have the infrastructure for that yet. Cause I want it to be higher quality. Gotcha. Um, hmm. I, I call, I, I, yeah, I call it blockchain because they call themselves blockchain and they use um, the same sort of um, open source OS. I, I can't read it. It's like Arabic to me, <laughs> you know, I can't read Arabic either, <laughs> you know? And so like DLive call themselves the blockchain network. And for people watching this too, like what I would recommend is go on these platforms and see it for yourself. Don't mm. look up what these platforms are because what will happen is the first link you'll get to Wikipedia. Yeah. You know, and Wikipedia, like D live says, hang on, let me, let me bring it up so I can read exactly what they're, what they say. Right. All right. D live D live is an American video streaming service, which was founded in 2017 fairly neutral. It was purchased by BitTorrent in 2019. Due to the site's lax informant of prohibited content guidelines, DLive has become a popular alternative to YouTube and Twitch among white nationalists, conspiracy mm. theorists, and neo-Nazis and other extremists. Yeah. It's like, and okay, so you don't recognize the people who don't use the spaces that are controlled by you as, uh, as as human beings. And the reason why they're using these words is because from their view, the I guess we can just call them race and gender cultists because it's the only term that's accurate. Unfortunately, I'd rather just call, I'd rather call them misled um, humans, you know, but if you're not going to recognize me as human, well, I'm under no obligation to recognize you as human, which is very unfortunate because that's how you get, Things like Washington Post polls that say 37% of the country wants to balkanize. <laughs> it's like, oh God, no, don't do that kind of kind of thing. Yeah. But and so I think it's because from their perspective, right? And I here's the thing. My argument against these Silicon Valley institutions is like they've colonized the public square through commerce like all of these arguments that i'm making five years ago even would be considered fairly left wing you know yeah because i'm true. drawing connections to colonialism and that's actually how i see it i am a liberal <laughs> like a like a classical classical liberal, liberal yeah you know but now if you go to go to twitter right or there's this post by reddit and i and i don't have a reddit account or a twitter account but the reason why i can speak about reddit and twitter is because it's just it's permeated across all these other platforms yeah it's the same with tiktok you know yeah tiktok yeah that's definitely one it's, of the worst if, uh, yeah they're they're stupefying our attention like they're feeding into adhd uh mm. and also like just there's there is psychological um studies that go into this before they throw it out there whereas uh twitter was like well say what you can about 160 characters well then i'll just use abbreviations and come up with a new urban dictionary so we can have a basically coded talk there was a uh, just over a decade ago i think mm -hmm. um th th i remember this um, this fbi agent was talking about how uh, his daughter i think she was like a tween and he was just like happened to be in the room and she was uh, in one of those uh, chat rooms. So this must've been before 2010. Mm -hmm. And he was just sitting there like, I have no idea what she's saying to him. It was like an encrypted message. And he's uh, like, what is this stuff? Like, what are you saying? Say and, and then she's breaking it dog down. Dog whistling. <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're, they're breaking it down, like speaking abbreviations or, or, um, or emojis and all that, that the, the API agents didn't know. So it's like, well, then now we got to get on the up and up to understand what the flip this is because to them they didn't know uh what that was but with respects back to uh, you touched on on, on wiki uh, wikipedia that's i guess it's an example of of the good thing about having something open but the downside to having any one uh, contribute and manipulate information there because anything can be weaponized and mm -hmm. Most people should know that Wikipedia is not a reliable source of information. It's, they but, say it on their homepage. I know. That's the first thing to say. <laughs> this is not reliable. It's, we haven't sourced any of this. It's just people just writing things over. Well, the um, thing is they do have sources, but they only source specific articles. Yeah. 
You know, they, they source three institutions and I'm going to use uh, ground news as an example of this. Cause uh, mm. it's a, it's a program on your computer that says like things are left and right or, or I, I heard about this thing. Yeah, it's not yeah. a, it's not a perfect system. And if you use it like too many times in the week, you know, they'll give you uh, like a paywall and you, you just have to mm. wait until the paywall goes away. It's not a perfect system, but they kind of allocate that. And, yeah. uh, and then there's a, uh, another program like NewsGuard. I don't use NewsGuard because it says, because the last time I saw someone using NewsGuard, it considered CNN as mostly factual. It's like, okay, <laughs> sure. You know, <laughs> but that's, that's the thing. They're all, it's, it's difficult to, to explain this, but they're all working in tandem with each other, you know, Silicon Valley, the media and the Democrat party. And the thing is we can't even call obvious fascism fascism anymore no because they're redefining our terms so, yeah, well yeah they they're first they're redefining our terms let's not jumble all over the place let's stick to the terms part the thing about it being alt tech is that's it's true to from a from a from a standpoint like it's the alternative to these to these sources and people use it because like me you know these people have a I'm such a left winger. They have a fascist ethical agenda that they're pushing on, on people. But it's like, how do I want to explain this? Okay, they all work in cahoots with one another. And then on top of working in cahoots with one another, people who don't work with them are like, okay, we'll do our own thing, right? We're the alternative. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, I would say what we could call the right just is just happy to have the conversation at this point so they're like yeah sure i'm yeah sure i'm uh i'm this evil evil person that you say that i am now let's talk about taxes it's like no no don't do that <laughs> and you're right about that but i think maybe we should call them freedom platforms or liberty platforms that's an interesting take or uh, American platforms, like these institutions, you know, pr basically um, adhere to like, you hear a, a lot of the, the people like the, there's this, uh, the CEO of um, Odyssey, he appears on people's podcasts or whatever talking because he's currently being sued by the Biden administration. Yes. Basically, long story short, because the Biden administration doesn't understand what cryptocurrencies are basically that's, that's literally what it comes down to yeah um, they, they think it's stocks and <laughs> it's not yeah you know <laughs> and so there's there's that and then the biden administration is doing a bunch of weird things like they're like they halted the subpoena process for like for weeks <laughs> what's the matter i thought i thought odyssey was doing something illegal yeah. You know? So was and I think uh, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, if anything's going to be considered blockchain, uh, that would be Odyssey. They're actually a lightning rod right now, uh, and with the whole uh, Secretary Exchange Commission is coming down on them and them being sued in the millions, uh, it's I'm seeing this thing play out because um, if there was ever going to be the best alternative uh, platform to YouTube that offers Odyssey. basically the same uh, kind of uh, benefits and commodities, it is Odyssey. Uh, it's just like, well, uh, just know that uh, being, as you kind of said, uh, a freedom platform mm -hmm. that they're, it, the First Amendment allows you to speak about certain things. And there's people with various different positions there uh, that make a certain amount of videos. But uh, I think what uh, would give people an idea, and this is me talking from, from a tech perspective, mm. one of the biggest uh, tech or, uh, well, I guess, uh, I don't want to say tech channels because he's not, but one of the tech channels that deals with online privacy and security, his name is Rob Braxman, the privacy guy. And mm. he is currently the largest tech channel on Odyssey because, well, he's basically speaking to the masses there. It's like, oh, you're preaching to the choir here and everybody knows, but at oh, least yeah. they're, they're staying updated on what is happening with uh, big tech, particularly with Apple and what they're doing with AirTags, what, uh, what Google is or is not doing um, with their infrastructure. I'm mostly concerned about what Apple's doing on their front. Google's kind of walking it back a little, but not in the sense of what's going on with Facebook and obviously everything that comes with Facebook, which in this case would be um, 
Uh, I think uh, Oculus is with them. Um, uh, WhatsApp, obviously, and Instagram. So mm -hmm. there's a lot that goes into that very, uh, the very monster, these oligarchies, and what they're doing with uh, with our data, with our privacy, uh, and how they're saying the quiet part out loud, saying that they are in cahoots with uh, the current administration. Mm -hmm. But people should be even more concerned now that uh, that they're openly admitting that they want to also see your text messages. Now that's dealing with the utility companies that would be like Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and the like to monitor you at that level. So you think, well, I'm leaving uh, social media altogether. I don't want to be in there. I don't want to be in an echo chamber or a bubble. Something we can discuss a little later, but mm. like whatever anybody says about that, I don't want to be there. I'm just going to go back to good old fashioned texting. What you, if you're trying to beat a mask from the government, it doesn't matter. They want in on your everyday life. Oh yeah. Everywhere. And if you're not rank and file, that's where they want to uh, deplatform you in a way or, or make your life uh, um, a living hell, uh, or in, in some cases, not even be able to uh, live. And this goes to what is basically called a social credit system. Um, I did an episode covering this on my program about two years ago. Um, yeah, it was August 2019. And in that one, I was covering the, the Chinese social credit system and how it can be coming here or already here in the United States. And in it, the argument is, because of the way our, we are a constitutional republic, we are not overnight going to dissolve into something like the CCP. Mm. It's not going to happen. But there is a way around it. It's called big tech. And it didn't take long to, to see that come to pass. So that's why someone like me knew that there was that very real risk. The box apocalypse happened with a lot of our Crowder and a lot of us independent content creators that didn't have a dog in any of these fights. We ended up getting caught in, the, in, in, mm -hmm. like in these, these nets that were after these big whales. Yeah. And then it became even worse when the lockdown happened about the virus of unknown origins that we cannot say that may or may not have come from a certain place. Yeah. So, so with and all the that- The reason you can't say that is because of YouTube's editorial policies that they call no, no 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 they are editorial policies they yeah. call them community guidelines right but if think about this right youtube houses um they house people on their platforms maybe not in a physical space maybe you'll have someone like a bunch of people all, all over the world you'll have a russian content creator a british content creator a canadian content creator and an american content creator they'll um they'll post some they'll post something you know, mm -hmm. they'll say, uh, they'll, all, they'll all basically say they're all over the world, but they say, I like apples. Right. So then there's this other group that comes in and say, these people say they like apples, but did you know that apples are bad, <laughs> you know? And so that, and that escalates the way it escalates. I, I don't think I have time to explain <laughs> that no, in that analogy, I, nor am I capable of jumbling that. But so then these platforms created community guidelines, which is another way of saying um, editorial policies. Yeah. You know, these community guidelines dictate what you can and cannot say on these supposed platforms, hmm. you know? And I, I'm going to jump off a point that you, that you, that you made there because you're calling it editorial guidelines and for those that should know better that are listening or watching this, um, YouTube is not a publisher. A publisher will be something like a newspaper. Whether you like or hate them, they have every right to do that because a publisher, they choose what to publish because they then become responsible for said content. In the case of platforms that are supposed to be open uh, forums, uh, town squares like uh, YouTube and the like, Facebook and the like, and I guess Twitter, in a sense, and the like. Mm. They operate like publishers when that's against the um, first of the First Amendment, which they're trying to um, say that that's what protects them to be able to do what they do. And if I, I think is a, um, oh my goodness, is it a title 2B203? If I look it up, I'm, I'm going to source it here. Um, if I remember to stamp it uh, for, for those watching. Uh, but that's is what they're violating for which is why there have been so many hearings nothing was really done about it but there was a lot of 
there's a lot of attention drawn to these companies because what they were doing in silencing, censoring, shadow banning, deplatforming was illegal. But like him or hate him, Alex Jones had rights to be on, on the platform and he was entirely mm-hmm. deplatformed. And when I saw this, like, oh, it's just a matter of time. This is the snowball effect. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually, um, big tech deplatformed a sitting president of the United States and it shocked the world. But it's not just that. They deplatformed him. And they said it in their statements, these big tech platforms, not only did they deplatform him all at the same time, they deplatformed him on something he didn't say. Correct. And not only that, they canceled him for something that he isn't even responsible for. In the New York Times' own reporting on this, their own timeline, their own graph, right? They had Trump's speech in orange, I believe. And then they had a blue line where the riots began. Well, there was still... 45 minutes of Trump's speech in there, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And then he concluded his speech. I've said this so many times, I have it memorized now. <laughs> we will soon be marching over to the Capitol to peacefully and patriotically make our voices heard. Mm-hmm. We will be cheering on some politicians and others not so much. Racist, sexist, homophobic, alt-right, Nazi, 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 bigot, fascist, insurrectionary, maggots, right? That's the newest word. Okay, so we're insects now. Mm. on top of all of the other dehumanizing labels that you're using yeah and and that's and that's just it that they ended up doing this and then immediately remove an entire problem hey if you don't like our platform build your own make your own so okay they did and then what happens you flip the switch on them took them took parlor off the app stores you took them um, amazon web services removed their, their entire database entirely but and not, not only until- that they decided that parlor was responsible for what users publish yeah the very violating thing. section 230 yeah, the, the very the- privileges that amazon gets parlor doesn't have yeah, and also Twitter and Facebook get. But the only place where you can create groups is Facebook. And the groups that were organized were organized Lines. on Facebook. So they made Parler the one to take the fall. And then at the conclusion of the investigation, they concluded that it wasn't Parler, it was Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. So then why are those things still up? Why it's because aren't those taken down? It's because they're part of the club. Yeah, or they own them, which is something even uh, bigger to think about because yeah. uh, I, I actually um, do agree with the thought process that these are the ones that are holding the chain to everything. Now, a lot of what we said already is none of it's YouTube friendly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, this is going to be- Even though none of what we're saying is false or anything like that. Exactly. Even though, every, even though I'm spending the majority of the time quoting the mainstream news and quoting- news clips in their full context of course there's because of youtube's editorial policies Mm -hmm. it can't be posted yeah and this is something that uh it's a shame because this leads to to a question i had on on my list i want to ask is it a good thing then uh to have uh alternative uh platforms or what i refer to as decentralized (laughs) platforms that in that sense yes because we have a place that says, yeah, freedom of speech. Okay, I'm here now, but you're telling me I, I, I can't say anything. All right, if I say something, I'm in trouble. If I'm silent, I'm in trouble. Like, okay, so I have to whisper, what's the deal here? Because silence is violence, speech is violence. Mm-hmm. So I whisper, or what's the deal here? Because I don't know what the rules are anymore when they keep moving the goalposts and, and all this. So the that's why with more talk about people actually leaving some of these platforms and going elsewhere because every now and then there'll be something new it's like wh- why did this a user on, on on youtube get put in youtube jail just recently fail army of all places fail army which is a comp uh, just video compilations of people uh, like having these fails whether it's uh with animals or running into trees or whatever car accidents stuff that they're posting on social media they just compile them put them into videos and they're, they're pretty hilarious so it's kind of a way to say hey they put it out there for you to laugh then go ahead and laugh and that's but, been around since um since like since vine yeah like we're talking you know? about old and then yeah. i find out that why hasn't felt armor posted a video in a while they announced last week that they've been in youtube jail for a video they put up years ago but the new guidelines are recent so like mm-hmm. hold on wait so they're in trouble for following the guidelines back then 
that makes no sense. So and they did that with a iDubs video about te- about uh, about three years ago. Mm-hmm. There was iDubs posted a content cop. It's sort of like where he calls out content creators for being um, bad people, mm-hmm. pretty much. You know, because iDubs and Filthy Frank, they're sort of like the first popular people on YouTube, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So in a way, not that they have the responsibility, but if they are to, you know, kind of gatekeep uh, the community of YouTube, they're the ones to do it. They're the first people, you know, they're the, they're the wise old men in the, in the internet space because everything ages um, 10 times faster than dog years on the internet, to put it mildly. That's true. So he followed all the rules back then. And this is the first major case of this. They banned his content cop against, I, I think it was a video against rice gum. No, 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 no. It was a video against Leafy. Uh, a channel, Leafy is here. It's one of those channels where it was the most successful channel where people would have gameplay and then they'd react to a clip. And then mm-hmm. when they would speak, they'd have the gameplay go. And then they would continue with the clip. Basically, it's a it's a very successful formula from back in the day, right? But basically, they removed his video for bullying because the Leafy video, like Leafy's entire channel, is predicated on bullying people <laughs> for for entertainment. Like it, it's one of those overly sarcastic, uh, super critical of every uh, pixel in the frame kind of kind of thing. And so iDubs made a thing that's like, okay, so Leafy's basically doing this. Oh, he doesn't have a chin. Oh, let's mock him for not having a chin because he mocks everyone for literally everything, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's against uh, YouTube's bullying thing. They didn't ban Leafy's entire channel. (laughs) You know, he just stopped posting because he wasn't getting the, likely because he was shadow banned or maybe because people were interested in him anymore. Who knows, right? Yeah. They didn't ban Leafy's entire channel but they banned iDubbbz's video for calling him out these, because these rules mean nothing. No. The only thing these rules mean is there's the club, there's us, and then there's not the club, you, which means since you're not the club, we could do whatever we want to you. That's why the rules are vague. That's why they say things like potential to cause harm. Well, I can hug you. And I cannot know that you have a spinal injury, right? Mm-hmm. And then 10 years, 10 years later, you have to go to another surgery. Is it possible that I potentially caused that? Who's to say me? that you didn't? Yeah, exactly. And you can't even say that you, yeah, you can't even say that you didn't because there's no judge. There's no jury. There is the mob and, the and court- there's the authority. Yeah. To the court of public opinion. Mm. So Trevor, this is the last thing we're going to hit. So then we can wrap it up on my end and we can uh, jump onto your show here Um, because this really feeds in to major news that, that, uh, that happened two days ago. Uh, And I think it will be Monday from when we're recording this. Mm. And that's something that I missed out on because I was very busy uh, in the direct messaging section of my, of my Instagram, because um, I happened to call out uh, several things. And that's kind of been like the motto for this week. And I warned my, um, my followers last week. It's like, Hey, um, like my old form is going to be available this week. Let's see how many of you will still be following by the end of this week, because I have to call things out for what they are, whether it's the left or right, it doesn't matter. Um, um, I have to call things out. I have to hold people accountable. And I did. And some people didn't like that. I was calling out some of their favorite uh, influencers out. It's like, Hey, mm. I, I call it for what I see it. So I missed out on this big art, big news that I'm going to be touching on, on, on my my tech, uh, my tech talk episode um, that goes that goes up before I publish this, uh, and it's with respects to PayPal teaming up with the Anti Defamation League. When I saw that, I'm like, well, if you think the community guidelines are something to be concerned about with big tech, just wait until you see what the ADL is going to do when it comes to your ability to just do uh, traditional e-commerce. How much has PayPal permeated? It's been a long time since eBay started PayPal and then branched off into its own financial institution and became its own beastly thing that you can connect your uh, all sorts of services, bank accounts, credit cards, 
gift cards, all these different things to that and make for uh, speedier checkouts when you're buying at different places and things. Mm. The Anti-Defamation League is... And I'm going to touch on this in tech talk uh, all the more and go over the entire, uh, their entire thing, but mm. they're going to be in charge of, of weeding out hate groups and extremists. And anybody that knows the ADL, just the Southern poverty law center or media matters, it is very left wing. And to, mm. uh, let, let me just say leftist uh, to say uh, liberal, even in the, in what the conservatives say, hey, you're a liberal, even those Liberals are more reasonable than leftists mm, because they value um, freedom, and I think I'd rather touch upon that on my segment because that's going to take ten minutes just to define my terms because of various things. Yeah. But it's on that point that yeah. I'm making that the whole thing about deplatforming somebody. Oh, you're, you're banned from YouTube. You can't create content on YouTube. And like, oh well, then fine. I'm just going to go to the to the other platforms and, and do my thing over there. Forget you, YouTube. Uh, some people would say like, oh, you've been banned from Twitter. That's all right. I'm going to one of the other platforms. You know, you never know. Uh, Parler, Gab, now Getter and things like that. I can go over there and do my thing. Maybe they'll look at me better over there because mm. if, uh, Twitter doesn't want me here. Fine. But now we're talking about merchant services mm. because it won't just be that the ADL is going to be identifying hate groups and extremism activity in the financial sector and your transactions. They're going to be reporting it to law enforcement and the government. Mm -hmm. So now it's going to be everywhere you go. So back to my original point about a video that I made about the social credit system being installed here in the United States. I said it was not going to be through the government. It's going to be via big corporations. And we're seeing it play out. And that's the biggest tech story that everyone should be talking about and concerned, whether the left, right, or center, about this PayPal ADL team up. Because Mm -hmm. PayPal's already had... Uh, issues removing uh, um, uh, or freezing accounts hmm. for people that they don't like their behavior. They're but a private company, which means they get to do whatever they want with your money, <laughs> which is absurd, absurd to think about. What they're doing is it's all a part of the same ethical agenda that they all just coincidentally happen to share. I'm sure it's all a coincidence. Right. That is the biggest overstep. Think of, think about this for a moment. You're a coal, you're a coal miner, you're a plumber, you're an electrician. Point is, you work pre- like especially if you're a coal miner, you work pretty hard for your money. And because you spend, you know, eight hours a day in the coal mine, you're probably not going to be too politically involved, let's just say. So you see something, you know, because you're um, a coal miner, because you're, and I'll probably touch upon this a bit more in, I guess, my segment, but because you're working class and not, you know, these college educated leftists, you don't even define yourself as working class. You're, you're basically completely apolitical, right? Mm-hmm. And your view of abortion is probably the 90s Democrat view of abortion, safe, legal, and rare, which is a fine culmination but people have their problems with it and whatever that's kind of done now but you finally get home you turn on the tv and you see something and you see the snl skit where the lady is just throwing confetti all over the place saying abortions for everyone Mm -hmm. be proud of your abortion you know well because the proletariat does not define themselves as the proletariat and you can make anyone on the left really mad about that because it's true you know he'll probably go to a thing where it's like okay well you know i work hard for my money i'll send some i'll send some money to um just an organization that wants to stop that because my view is that abortion is killing a child or whatever but sometimes it's necessary right the adl then tells paypal that this coal miner does not have the right to use his hard-earned money the way he wants because of the ADL's ethical agenda. It's the most insane thing ever. And cherry on top, they define themselves as saving 
the working class. They define themselves as, you know what, at this, look, if the, if PayPal, I'm going to say this to everyone, if PayPal stops you from using your money to spend how you please, legal things, and the ADL then decides to say, nope, you can't spend your money. Sue the Anti-Defamation League for defamation. <laughs> yeah. it, that's, that? that's, what, that's what it is. Because, because, because of the ADL's nature, right? If you get, so if you, then imagine this, you get your money freezed, your hard-earned money freezed. So you naturally take the social media because you want some justice because these institutions have transgressed you, <laughs> you know? This yeah. is where my leftist comes out, I guess. <laughs> anyway, and so you basically say, mm. and so you basically say something along the lines of the ADL just f- froze my funds. I'm a coal miner or whatever. Well, now you're the victim of a targeted harassment campaign. Because after all, why would the ADL engage in defamation? You know? <laughs> so they ruin your social life. They ruin your financial life. And that's basically kicking you out of society. At least you could still buy bread when the Roman Catholic church would ostracize you. At least you could live, (laughs) you know, you could at least participate in society. Yeah. (laughs) You know, that's, and that's uh, what people have, have allowed. It's like, well, they're, you know, they're a private company uh, and they could do what they want. And with your money, (laughs) that happens to even be the, uh, some conservative positions that like, well, how's that working out for you? So uh, now they're complaining, Hey, whoa, whoa, what's going on? It's like, you let them, you let them, but Hey, we're going to, Gonna leave it here, uh, Trevor. So thank you so much for joining me on the on Govia show. Uh, and I'll be appearing on yours shortly. Hey, you made it to the end. I hope that means you liked this episode. So by all means to show your support, hit that like button down there. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you please would share this with somebody you know that will benefit from the content of this channel. See you in the next one.